Welcome to this week's Ask, where we're going to be diving into your questions. Um, last week we had a great show. I want to try and keep that going this week, Neil. Um, are you up for some I am. Big we're, answers? We're wearing the same shirts again. We are, aren't we? And, I, and we chose black t-shirts on the hottest day I've ever known. Ever. Um, so it's quite warm in the shed. Let's get into these questions uh, and see if we can keep the heat going. <laughs> see what I did there? Right. Dexter Fawkes is starting us off. Fawkes. Guy Fawkes. Another heat reference. <laughs> this is going to be a good show. Um, Dexter says, I have a dropper post on my new enduro bike. Now, this is a common question, Neil. Oh. Can I clamp my bike stand to it? If so, where do I clamp it? I would say yes, because I always do this. I've always done it at home. But yes. the people, our well, lovely viewers, these people, yes. kick off in the comments and say, don't do that because the manufacturer tells you not to do it. They do. Um, but if you've got a decent bike stand with the, the rubber or the plastic bits, it won't damage it. So just don't clamp it super hard. Yeah. And if you can, definitely do it on the part that isn't the stanchion. So raise your post out of the frame a little right. bit. Right, so rather than grip the However, thinner part. Yeah. I do it on the, on, do it on the thinner part as well. Yeah, and it's yeah. never ever been a problem. Yeah, I've definitely said this before that you can just clamp it lightly as well and kind of hang it on there rather than yeah. grip it. Be well, careful. Usually enough. Extend your post before you do it. I would say, but I'm, yeah. yeah, it's fine. There you go. Just be careful. But it can be done. Yeah. Um, the Mango Muncher says, "I have aluminium XC wheels, uh, and mm -hmm. I may have smashed it off a curb. May of. No. Sounds like you have done. Just riding along. Yeah, just riding along. Um, and I've got a sizable dent in one side of the rim. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't lose tire pressure, but should I replace it, or is it okay to leave it?" Personally, I would check the spoke tension, and if you've not changed that, because you can do that, you can just sort of ding the rim and not really change the structure of the wheel, then I'll say yeah. it's fine, especially if your tyre's staying on there. Yeah. Do it too much, the tyre can pop off, mm -hmm. or it can seem fine, and then you'll ray in the corner and the tyre will pop off. Yeah. So in the past, I've just got some mole grips on there and bent them back. Ooh, it's ghetto. Bit, it is ghetto, it leaves a bit of a mark on it as well, but yeah. I'd say it's probably all right. Yeah, um, I tell you what, something I'd look out for is like that that spoke tension. If one side of the spokes has become really slack, yeah, um, be careful for that because I have been riding long once on a trail and the the wheel just yeah went because I hadn't taken care of it. It was my fault. So I've seen that a lot, and it generally is because people haven't tensioned spokes. Yeah, yeah. So keep an eye out for that, Mango Muncher. <laughs> That's a weird name. Matthew Stevens, when I jump, oh, this one, you will like this one. Neil, Matt, Neil. Matt Stevens. No, it's not Matt Stevens, but it, well, it could be. It could be. could be. He can't jump for toffee, so this guy's asking about <laughs> jumping. Now, Neil is a trained coach. Oh, not only a World Cup downhill expert, oh, but a trained coach. Thanks, guys. He knows all the official ways to say these things. So Matt Stevens is saying, when I jump, my front foot only keeps coming off the pedal. This problem has only started since I, st I started riding a full sus. But he can jump on his hardtail um, with no problems. Um, and on his jump bike, um, his shins are starting to ache though, where he keeps right hitting out, them. Yeah. So why would that be? Why would a full sus bike make your foot come off as opposed to other bikes, or has he just got a bit of a mental block? Oh, it's weird. I'm not sure I've ever seen that, where someone's front foot keeps coming off. Mm. Bit weird, but generally, it's because I've said, how many times you'll pull them with your feet, so yeah. sh your feet should be weighted in the pedals all the time. Even when you hit a jump, they'll be super weighted on the way up, and then in the air, your bike yeah. should come with them. There should be no reason for your feet to come off unless you're pulling it off because oh. you've got used to doing that and pulling your feet. So that would be my only suspicion. I don't know why it would be different from a hardtail to a false mention. Yeah, I thought that was an intriguing question because I couldn't see a reason for the false has to be making that happen. Rebound could be quick. No, rebound would be No, it's a tricky one, that one. But we think, I, I agree with Neil, that you, you, you're pulling up with your feet, Got it. And, it, and, it, and it's just not the right way to Everyone's go. Everyone's done it. I mean, we've all yeah. shinned ourselves when one foot lands back on, the other one doesn't, and it flies around. Boom. Shinners are just part of mountain biking. Yeah. Mm. You have to, after a while, you start to enjoy them. <laughs> like, oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah, you see the bone. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> have you ever done, I've done that, have you? It's horrible, yeah, it's, it? it's like, oh, that is oh, not nice. Okay, Otto Ryason says, Ryasonen, sorry, no. says, 
How can I make my hardtail more aggressive? You could change the tyres, that would work. Um, you've said that before, but is there another way? Could we change uh, um, the setup? The bars, put higher rise bars on there, shorter stem, longer yeah. fork, slacken the bike out a bit. It's gonna ride like jumps and downhills a bit more yeah. comfortably, should we say? Yeah, and what's that effectively doing? Bringing the weight Tipping over the, the back, of the, back, of, the back of the bike? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay, so short stem, we're gonna be coming to that a little bit later on, okay. a bit more detail. But for now, let's take a look at this video that Neil made and how hard you can push a hardtail. I think Blake made it. That's what I said. This is the hardtail. Some of you viewers probably have one in your garage. This is probably the only bike you have. But we get a number of questions down below and on our social media on questions like, can this bike hit a 20 foot jump? Can this bike race downhill? Can this bike race enduro? Can it do XC? Can it do free ride lines? Well, today is one of those days where I'm gonna tick off all the things that this beast is capable of. So let's kick it off. Cool vid that, you're right, it was Blake. <laughs> Made that mistake. Okay, Raphael Curtisis is gonna keep us going. How do you unscrew a rounded bolt? I tightened it too tight. Well, you go back in time and don't tighten it too tight. <laughs> it's really hard one. to get it off now. Oh, it's made it really it's hard. hard. It's now, definitely a beginner's mistake. I'm sure we've all done that one. Yeah. Tighten yeah. everything too tight. I'd look for the angle. I'd look for the angle on the Allen key. Good you Allen, Allen key. You get into the angle and then you can get it going usually. Cheap Allen keys, not good. No. Better Allen keys. Take it to a shop, that'll be able to help. Occasionally you can get like a torque head and hammer it in and just so it's super tight, but oh, we're going back to bodging things. Yeah, I've got one option. I think I mentioned this last week as well because it was a very similar question, but these are things that happen all the time. Snap bolts. You can get a screwdriver and if it's the right size it might just go in across yep. Yep. the uh, the, um, the gap the gap between the widest points of yeah. the of the I've done that key. I've hammered a screwdriver yeah, in as well get in a little yeah, bit and well. you might be able to get it going yeah it's all right but I tell you what you should enjoy this moment because tinkering around your bike that way it can be a lot Don't of fun know. Frustrating. Um, You'd love it if it was a motorbike and it was 58 years old. Right. You'd be like, oh yeah, I'm that's, getting to that. But you know, like type two fun is yeah. like, that's like type two mechanic in. <laughs> after, after you've done it, it seems okay, but at the time you just want to kick it across the room. <laughs> okay, I like that, type two. Okay, Shane Grattan says, which would you recommend buying? Fox Float DPS or RockShox Monarch for sending huge drops and jumps? I've put this question in, Neil, specifically, so I could say, I've got Monarchs on my mountain trike. Have you? <laughs> I just wanted to say that sentence. Um, I would say they're both good shocks. There'll be very little to choose between them, to be what, honest. Wait, between sort of brands like that, what would you say we could pick between them? Is there something that generally RockShox are giving you that... Not that, really. That, I guess we, if you go up on the Fox, what I want to call the the, uh, the air downhill shock, I want to call. But you have loads of control on that for mm. high and low speed compression and rebound. But for those suspension, the Float and the Monarch, very similar. So yeah, you go in with which brand you like the most, probably. Oh, okay. I know which one I choose. What would you choose? Say so at the same time, I'm, I'd go with Rock Fox. Oh, I'm actually not bothered. I've got both on some bikes and I don't care. Yeah, really. I like swapping it around a bit. Okay, David Powell says, when I try to wheelie, ah, oh, the old wheelie question. Yeah. How do I get a wheelie? Um, when I try to wheelie, I have no problem getting the front end up, sorted, that's yeah. a wheelie. Um, but my bike always seems to want to flop over to the side. It gets the front wheel up, uh, it's flopping. Bit, bit of speed can help with this one, but uh. practice. What do you reckon? It's just getting used to it. It's getting used to it, really using the knees. So imagine these are the knees when you're pedaling, you want to try and yeah. pedal with the with the knees a little bit. And you will get them lose out balance, so you've got a tree. Yeah. Keep so when it goes one way, bring the knees across like that and try and compensate. Make sure your arms are straight and you're tipped back with the bike. If you sit yeah. into it, that can happen and then it's really easy to lose balance. So yeah. sit back into the wheelie as if you're sat on the flat 
but your front wheel's gone up, so you just tip back. Absolutely, and keep practicing it because it is the best feeling, and you can't beat wheelies and skids. We found that to be true. Um, Rhiannon from South Wales. Um, now, this is a bit of a long story, so I'm not going to read it all out, but basically, Rhiannon has been really enjoying her mountain biking. She hasn't been doing it long. She's been riding a fairly tame trail. Cool. But she's gone out, she's tried a harder trail, uh, and Bike Park Wales, actually. Um, and had proper panic attacks. She's got yeah. in a really severe situation where she felt really uncomfortable, had to push the bike down. All her confidence has gone, Neil. As a trained coach, don't, what do you do now? Well, don't worry about pushing bike, that's fine. People, mm. we always, everyone's done that, so don't mm. worry about that. Just go back to the Mellow Trails, keep at it with those. Honestly, it will come back, but just don't try and ride over your head. Definitely mm. go back to these trails, make sure you have fun fun enjoy it that's what i say too and don't let that feeling of lost confidence take over just yeah. yeah take a step back and if you do feel uncomfortable on your bike don't be scared to get off and wander yep um and thinking about that actually let's take a look at this video which is how a corner with confidence cornering it's probably the number one cause of crashing on a mountain bike that can completely rob you of confidence if you don't feel good in the turns so let's try and master it and tick off a list of ways you might be going wrong. You know a lot about cornering. <laughs> you really do. Um, Done a few in my time. You must I wonder how many corners <laughs> you've been round. Oh my God. Um, right, let's carry on. Mortise um, from beautiful Bavaria. Nice. Um, is, he wants to know about pads, basically. He's got some of these pads, but someone like Blake, who's doing dirt jumps, yep. what padding is he using that he can get under his jeans? Because if you notice, Blake's never got pads over his jeans. He's always yep. got jeans on. He's a mountain biker in jeans. Yep. Um, where does he get those so Blake's from? Blake's probably using the POC, I would imagine the VPD Air, which is super thin ones. Yeah. To be honest, when I was dirt jumping back day, I used to get for massive ones, probably wear shorts more. Often it used to be the style, didn't it? Big old yeah. square knee pads. But also, you don't really need them to be comfortable to pedaling, because you're not really pedaling, so right. I just go for some big ones, because you're going to yeah. whack your knees a lot, probably dirt jumping. Yeah. And also, it's good for pinching your seat if you want to do suicide no and tricks like that. Absolutely. Big knee pads going to help you do that. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, I will tell you, right, just so you've got Blake's set up, um, you've got to imagine Blake with no trousers on, okay? Yeah. And then he is basically Seen padded that. from just above the knee all the way down to his ankle. There is no gap. He protects everything because he's so used to doing tail whips and things like that. He's been right. hitting the shin so many times, he's broke his shins. Um, yeah. He, he's really, he's more padded up than you could. He's actually only this wide. It's yeah. all padding. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but he's he does... even got bicep pads. That's why his arms look so big. Yeah, yeah. No, his arms look big because he's so little. No, no, really. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Ch Karma Charmling is saying, um, can you make a video about diet for riders? Yeah, we've not yes. done much of that. I know GCN have done a couple of really good recent ones about yes. uh, shakes and things you can make for riders. Yeah, I yeah. think I'm going to do a diet video for riding of, about going vegan yeah. riding mountain bikes. Yeah, it's a good because, idea. Because uh, I'm an advocate of that. Um, it's the future. We're all going to be doing it. So we may as well start now. Are there any pro uh, mountain bikers that are vegan? I don't know. Only good ones. I'd like to know. Only good ones. I have heard that it makes you 15% better. Maybe we should tell them. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we might do a video about that to do with diet um, and also out on the trail, obviously, the food you could either make or take. Do you so think got a couple of things being 15%, no, being more vegan or being vegan, yes. you can be a bit vegan, can you? No. Does that make you 15% more smug? <laughs> and that's what makes them faster. Good comeback. <laughs> I deserve that. I deserve that, right in the chin. Okay, next we've got a Fred Puddle Pouncer Ungland. Um, just bought so my first game. bike. Woohoo! Nice. Um, my height puts me in the si between sizes. Yeah. Um, and this is coming back to that stem length question. Oh, yeah. Um, now, he wants to try and make the bike fit. Um, he's only got a 40 mil stem, yeah. so not much to play with. Um, but he's thinking that he could buy a bar with some rise and lean that Ooh, back, I pass which that. I don't like the idea no. of. Um, uh, so, what should he do to try and make that large to medium bike fit his yeah, size? Yeah, the rise would be weird. You'd get a weird sweep on the bars if you did yes. that. You can 
go down to a short stem. I'm yeah. not sure how much short. There's those bars. I need to ask Dolly this, but there's a bar which comes with almost an indent on the back to give you yeah. a super short stem. Yeah. Because there are these bikes now with super long reach on them. Yeah. So Google it. I'm sure you can get something that's a lot shorter than 40, maybe yeah. 20. Yeah, definitely 20. And I would I would really recommend doing that, not sweeping them bars back. Absolutely. Um, that's a mistake. Um, it'll really make the bike ride really strange. And 40 mil, actually, you have got a bit to play with. Yeah. You know? I mean, you know, sometimes riders are like, I'm in an hour in between 10 mil of how they want their bike. 10 back. mil makes it a will, big it difference. It will make a big difference. So if you can find a 20, I'm not sure you'll have to Google it, but that will make a massive difference. Um, now, on that question, on this subject, I love this um, question coming in from Ivo um, Roylev. Um, and he was asking about trying to get a lower rise on his bike. Yeah. Um, and could he just sweep the bars down, upside down. Wow. So he got the bars lower than the stem, almost, almost had that anti-drop, anti, anti -drop, yeah. um, bit Nino Shirter looking. Would that work? So, Nino Shirter runs, they're not rise bars, but they're flat bars, and he yeah. does run them upside down, but you can't yeah. just roll them back, because then the sweep would be the wrong way around. Yeah. So you need to undo the stem, take them out, flip them around and then do that. Yes. And it comes back then. So he's done it with a relatively flat bar that goes down yes. and he rides a native stem because he yes. loves the big native rise. Yeah. Yes, you can do that. I wouldn't, again, want to do it with a big riser bar. No, yes. Yeah, so it's a specific type of bar we're talking about. One that hasn't got the same kind of sweep and rise yeah. as, say, a downhill or a dirt jump bike. Because if you turn yeah. those upside down, it would not no. work 100%. They're all getting a bit closer, to be honest. The cross-country yeah. uh, car bars are getting quite close to the sweep, but not that massive rise, for sure. Yeah, yeah. so, so check out the bars. Um, and looking at someone like Nino Shirt's bike, it's a really good idea because that setup is yeah. becoming quite popular and it's, compared to old style riding, it's really strange, it really is, different. Yeah, pretty different. Um, uh, and I think that's a bit of a hack, so why don't we take a look at these hacks that we've done in the past. Okay, so this is a cool little hack that I like to do on most of my bikes. I run an 800mm bar on most of them, just because I'm quite a tall sort of guy. And what I find is my hands always find themselves towards the end of the bars. So using a lock-on style grip like this Ergon, I actually just run it about 10mm over the end of the bars just to give myself that extra length. Quick fire round! Do you want me to do it, Neil? No, I'll do it. We can do it. Archie Jennings says mountain bike or football. Oh, at the moment, I'm enjoying the World Cup, but mountain biking. I, I want to keep my job. MTB all day. Hey, GMBM. What's the cheapest carbon part on a bike? <laughs> and how much is it? Oh, I know. Spacer. It's one. Spacer I know. Spacer. Stem spacer. How much are they? I can't remember. They've got to be pence. Yeah. No. no, about the pounds still. Mm. Really? Yeah. Oh, my God. That's a rip off. Oh, really? Jo uh, Jack is saying eight quid. I no, don't charge. This is oh, quick no, fire no, round. Please. Just want to remind oh. you. <laughs> Dante is a 29er hardtail XC geometry, okay to use on a BMX stroke pump track. Yeah. That's all right. Brian Zant, uh, is carbon really better than aluminium? Oh, it depends what you're talking about, really. Frame, bars, I cranks, I wouldn't who say, knows? I wouldn't say better. I'd say lighter, more expensive. Different. Different. Yeah. Noah D88, how do I turn my cross country stroke enduro bike into more of a downhill bike? Ah, that's another one of these. Boots. Boots. Change the boots, tyres. Wear boots on it, that's not enough. <laughs> uh, Dolph Newham, which wheel size question mark? Oh crikey. Oh I love this because time has gone past. This used to be the big question a few years back, but quite a lot of time's gone past now since 29 has established themselves, 27.5 plus fat. Now we can actually make a informed judgment, Neil. Which wheel size? Oh, You've got to pick one right now. 27.5, but then I enjoy riding 29 a lot at the moment, so. Well that wasn't an answer. Well, it's the answer is 27.5, everybody knows that. <laughs> um, go on. Repeal, Adretti, will you ever come to Mexico? Yes. Will we? Yeah. Oh. Of course we will. Oh, I'd, like to. I'd love to. I tell you what, I saw a nature show um, on Mexico the other day. Squid and far, Martin. Fascinating. 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 Oh, it's quick fire, yeah. Well, actually, that's the end of quick fire. <laughs> right, correct me if I'm wrong. I think we should change the name of this of Please Teach Me to Jump. That's because fine. it's, oh, correct me if I'm wrong, it's always about jumping, which is fine because yeah. we all love jumping and we know why, why you want to master it. This week it's Kieran Cousin. Um, he's given us some great angles of cool. this jump. It's basically like a step down jump he wants to clear, um, but he can't get to where he wants to land and he's even marked on the video where that is. All right. <laughs> so check this out, I really love it. It's sort a great, a great little clip, but we've got to give him some answers. Oh. Okay, so he's trying to get into the road wow. gap there. Look, here he is from another angle. 
Oh. Rap. That is speed. And if you were unsure, Neil, he wants to be landing just there. That just there. is all about speed, but yes. it looks to me like it's a, quite a tight corner beforehand. So, um, yeah. this, this isn't necessarily your jumping skills, it's more of your, a test of your cornering skills. Good answer, Neil. So, you need to go faster. Yeah, you need to nail that corner before, because you can see you're too upright, and you need to come around that quick, and then whoop, it's going to give you a right, then when you're going to take off, you're going to be coming in out of a left, and you need to give it a bit of whip. Speed and pop. I reckon you're missing the speed. Beauty. Let's have one more look. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Pop is all yeah. right. Yeah. 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 You can get it. You can get it. The speed's there. Keep at it, dude. I'm so sure. Great. You know. Great. Correct me if I'm wrong. Right. Thanks for sending in your questions. Um, of course, you can put some down in the comment section below this video, and we'll try and answer them next week. Yeah. Send them to us. Uh, ask at gmbn.com on email if you'd like to ask us that way. Good video is over here. Click for it. It's real bike versus race bike. I'm on my fancy. Uh, all the bells and whistles, very expensive cross country race bike. Blake is on his cheaper, newt proof hardtail, and we compared the two. Yeah, what more could you ask for? There's a globe just there. If you click it, it will help you subscribe, and of course, those are much appreciated.